Hello everyone, my name is Fernando Kramer and I'm a sales engineer here at Cortex. And on this video, I'd like to walk you through how easy it is to set up things in Cortex. We're going to look at a couple of the, our, our out-of-box integrations. We're going to set up our catalog for services and resources. And we'll do that all under 10 minutes. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do in Cortex is, as you can see, I have a brand new instance. I don't have anything in here yet. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my settings here and I'm going to go to integrations and as you can see right now I don't have any active integrations so uh, we usually recommend that at least to get started you have a cloud provider a git provider and an identity provider set up uh, those are kind of the, the minimum so that way you can have some meaningful information in your service catalog so let's start with our cloud provider and in this video I'll use AWS so to set up uh, our AWS integration here are some instructions where you create a specific policy and then once you create the policy, you are going to associate it to a role. And then down here, we want the account ID and the role that you created. So I already have done that. So I'm just going to copy that information and, and put it here. Put it here and then we'll save it. So now um, we can test the configuration and we'll get a confirmation that it works. Great. So that's it for AWS. Next, move on to our Git provider. And for this uh, video, we'll use GitHub. Now, for GitHub, I'm going to just install our GitHub app. So I'm just going to follow the prompts here to install it. So I'm going to configure the Cortex app. And here I'm going to associate it to my Cramerica organization. That's where I'm going to install this. Notice that you can do all repositories or only selected repositories. I'll choose to do all repositories. So install and authorize. So now that this is all uh, connected, I can do a test configuration. We have a solid connection to, to GitHub. Great. So now uh, we we'll, let's look at identity provider. So for SSO, we have an open ID connect uh, connector. And in my case, it is Okta. And for Okta, what I need to do is you installed uh, an Okta application. So you go to Okta's uh, place where you select the applications. There's a specific one for Cortex. Uh, and then you get the client ID, which is what I'm going to put here, and as well as the, the secret for that application. So I already went ahead uh, and created that application or downloaded, installed it from Okta. And I'm just copying and pasting the values from that app. And then the issuer is my the really the, the URL for my uh, instance of Okta, which in my case is a, a developer instance. So I have this now, so I can save it. And we have that set up. Now I'm also gonna integrate to Okta uh, through an API token. And the reason I'm going to do this is because this will allow me to also download Teams and allow for Cortex to have a two-way uh, continuous integration into uh, who belongs to which team, which is very critical when it comes to ownership. So Cortex is uh, something unique about Cortex is that we'll continuously uh, get the latest version of who belongs to which teams in Okta. But this could also be for Active Directory, GitHub Teams, and other sources as well, like Workday. Um, and you can use that in ownership. Okay, so it looks like we have all of our integration set up. So now let's populate our catalogs with some data. So for services, uh, we'll go to catalog and services and we'll import services. Uh, in Cortex, a service really is any entity that contains your code. So it could be a microservice, it could be an API, it could be a monolith, it's really whatever uh, you want. Uh, the, the common thing is usually it's something that contains your code. So here there's some lambdas I could import from AWS or I can go to GitHub and choose a uh, repository. So here I'm gonna use a couple of my uh, repositories that, that, that I have in my organization. And then I'm just going to add those. So that uh, starts to populate things into my service catalog. So if I look at AppDirect, for example, the service I just added to my catalog, uh, since it comes from GitHub, it knows the, the repo, it knows the language from the repo. It's also able to show me commit history, any events that are coming, because um, the integration automatically pulls uh, Git information, but also uh, packages, for example, because it's a Python project as a requirements file. Um, it highlights the documents from Git. All of this just because it came from Git. So it automatically, I'll get all this information for free. 
Now let's talk about resources. So resources are the other components in your application that don't contain your code. So this could be a database and it's rebucket. And this we're going to import from AWS. So as you can see now, uh, since we already have it hooked up with AWS, I have, I have an EKS cluster I could, I could import. There's a database. There's several things that I could import here from AWS now that I can put into my catalog. And just like uh, the services, if you click on any of these, um, you, since it's coming from AWS, then what we'll see is AWS details. So these are coming from the API, and this allows us to write uh, scorecards against these. But I could also tie other integrations into this resource. Lastly, uh, let's create a new team. So since we did integrate with Okta, I'm able to now uh, select from an identity provider. So here's looking at uh, my Nodlings team from uh, my organization in GitHub. But as you can see, they also have organizations from Okta. So you can plug in multiple sources of truth for who belongs to which team. In this case, Okta is really the most kept up to date. So I'm going to bring in the engineering team. And what this will do is it will keep an up-to-date list of the members of the team. So the, the, the folks that you see here, these four individuals, uh, this is what lives in Okta right now. So if we were to have a, if, if David moves on to another team, uh, you don't have to come into Cortex and take David out. David would be automatically taken out of this screen because we're constantly uh, have an integration with, uh, we automate that sync with your identity provider. So now that we have a team, now I can go to my service. So back to my app direct service, and I'm going to assign this uh, an owner. So to do that, I'm going to configure the service and go to owners. And I'm just going to select that engineering team. So I publish the changes, and now uh, we'll see that engineering is the owner of this service. If I click on the owners, I get that list of folks. That again, is going to be coming from your IDP, and it's something that Cortex will show you the, the up-to-date list from that source of truth, the correct list of owners. So the last thing I like to do in this video is, well, how do we add more data, right? How do you add more integrations? How does that work? So let's add, let's say that now that we have our basic service catalog, now we want to add other integrations. So what's that workflow? So we will go back to settings, select the other tools that we want to uh, integrate. In this case, I'm going to use Jira. It's pretty popular. Most everybody, I think, uses it. And then I have a, a token. And then I'm going to grab the, the domain. So we're going to save this. Does the configuration works? So now if I go back to uh, my services, uh, I have a label for my tickets uh, with app direct as a label. So what that means is that since I have that label that matches the service name, Cortex automatically ties those tickets to this uh, service. In the cases where there's not a clean matching, notice that for every single entity, we'll create an open API spec for that service or uh, resource as well. And here's where you can also manually enter, configure uh, the integration mapping. So in case that uh, I didn't have a clean mapping with Jira, I could add it at an xcortex-jira section and specify the project or label or component that I wanted to, to tie uh, to the service. And you can also manage this in your Git repo, and you can also manage this via GitOps. Well, I hope this video has been helpful. If you have any questions, uh, please go to cortex.io and, and let us know what you think. Thank you. Goodbye.